Welcome again, students. In today's video, we will be looking at the curriculum-based test for language arts, April 2022. The paper lasts for one hour and 30 minutes, and you will have 40 questions to complete. Okay, here are the instructions for items one to 37. There's only one correct answer. You're going to indicate your response to each item by shading the letter next to the answer you chose. An example is given below. Which part of speech is underlined in the sentence below? Nancy kicked the red ball. The options, adjective, noun, verb, preposition. C is shaded because it is the only correct answer. So for items 1 to 37, there's only one correct answer. All right, so we're going to be reading a passage that we will then use to answer items one to four. As a child, the adults in our lives may be a real grown up looked really fun. But you know what? It's not as glamorous as it looks. Also, being an adult comes with loads of responsibilities. As a girl, all I wanted was to eat as many snacks and sweets as my hands could carry. But like most parents, my mom and dad fed me real meals instead of candy and fast food. They told me I had to eat from all the food groups in the correct portions. That meant eat your vegetables. Yuck. I used to think it would be fun to have a job, own a car and live in my own house. Having a job makes you tired. Cars are expensive. Monthly payments, insurance, and gas add up quickly. Plus, who wants to be spending most of their money paying bills? Light, water, cable, internet, and groceries. Being a child is the best part of anyone's life. So when someone asks you what you want to be when you grow up, give them a well-thought-out answer. Tell them you never want to grow up. Okay, and the title for that was Adulthood is Overrated. All right, so let's get to question one. The writer sees which stage of life as the most fun. Options, adulthood, being a baby, childhood, being a senior citizen, and of course, based on the final paragraph, it indicates that she thinks being a child is the most fun, okay? So that's option C. Question two, how did the writer feel about healthy eating, okay? So if we go back to the passage, she spoke about having to eat vegetables and she said yuck, okay? So that gives us an idea of what she thought about eating healthy and what she wanted to eat but what her parents gave her instead. So how did she feel about healthy eating? She was not fond of it. That's option A. Question three, which signal word is used to indicate the resolution of the story? Okay, so again, we will can look close to the end of the story. And we see the word, so when someone asks, what you want to be when you grow up, give them a well thought out answer, tell them you never want to grow up. So the word so there, got the options, but plus so also, that indicates the resolution, the final statement, the final thing she wants you to note on what she said, okay? That's so you should answer. All right, question four. What best summarizes the writer's views? Is it that pain builds is a burden? Enjoy your life while you're young. Eating healthy is important. Most children like snacks and sweets. What best summarizes the writer's view? Of course, all these things you might be able to find, you know, in the story. But the main thing, what best summarizes would be option B. You are to enjoy your life while you are young. Okay. Now we get to another passage that we're also going to read and use it to answer items five to seven. It says, time to eat. 
Here is something to think about. Many persons around the world eat lunch at 12 noon. However, there is no scientific evidence to suggest that there is a fixed lunch time. Some doctors and dietitians agree that the best time to eat during the day is when you are hungry, irrespective of whether it is before or afternoon. There are many factors that will help to determine what time of the day a person will be hungry. For instance, most people tend to skip breakfast. For instance, most people tend to skip breakfast or have something light to eat. Those who skip breakfast may be hungry sooner than those who didn't. Persons who ate breakfast are likely to become hungry between three and four hours after they have eaten. Additionally, schools often begin between eight and nine in the morning and lunchtime is usually three or four hours after. Persons who usually, sorry, persons who work usually begin their day between eight and 8.30 in the morning. Lunchtime for them is usually at 12 noon or one o'clock in the afternoon. So it is fairly accurate to say that school and work have played a role in determining when we are able to have lunch. Okay, let's get to question five. The word used to begin paragraph three is a, is it a supporting detail, topic sentence, connective, or a conclusion? Let's get to paragraph three. Paragraph three, the word additionally, that word is a connective. All right, question six. Question six says, what is the main idea in the passage? Okay, is it that lunchtime is usually at noon? Most, peop most persons tend to skip breakfast. It is healthier to eat in small portions. The best time to eat is when you're hungry. What was the main idea in the passage? Okay, let's go back. For me, I think the main idea in the passage is option A, which states that lunchtime is usually at noon, all right? So it does say, it does start off by saying that most people around the world eat lunch at noon. And they go on to tell us why this is so, because of work and school, the time that school begins, and then you get lunchtime three or four hours after. And of course, for persons who work, then they also get their lunch time around 12 or one o'clock based on the time when they start working and so on. So the main idea that I see here would be that lunch time is usually at noon. Does it say that is the best time? That's not what it's saying. It's just saying because of the factors of school and work and all of that, then usually lunch time is at 12 o'clock, whether or not. That's a scientific, there's a scientific reason behind it. That's the main idea of the passage that typically lunchtime is at noon. All right, so let's get to question seven. The statement below is from the passage, which best describes it? Okay, so the statement says, school and work have played a role in determining when we are able to have lunch. Okay, so... Is that a conclusion? Is it a connective? Is it a topic sentence or a support in detail? Let's look at where it is in the passage. All right, so it's here. So it starts right here. So it is fairly accurate. And the point, the actual, the re, um, part of the thing, something to note here is that it says, so it is fairly accurate. So I'm going to assume that this would be the conclusion, okay? That lunchtime is usually at 12 because of this reason. So school and work have helped to shape the time when we eat lunch, all right? So that's the conclusion about school and work. Okay, next passage. Read the passage carefully, then use it to answer items 8 to 11. John was feeling blue because it had been raining all day at the seaside hotel. 
he stared sadly towards the sea. The waves inched nearer and nearer to the tent he had excitedly erected on the beach yesterday with his father. The sea was plotted with the rain to ruin his birthday plans. A burst of laughter from his friends nearby dragged him back to reality. They were already in the clubhouse, playing video games, watching movies, and exchanging jokes. He turned his back on his troubles and reluctantly embraced the evening ahead. He figured it was better to get on with it in this boring clubhouse than to not have the party at all. Question 8. What occasion did John and his friends plan to celebrate? Okay, so of course he talks about birthday plans here. So I'm going to say that it was his birthday. Okay, next question. What figure of speech is used in the sea was plotting with the rain? Okay, the options, alliteration, metaphor, onomatopoeia, simile, and the correct response would be a metaphor. What? Question 10. What does the word blue mean as used in line one? Let's go quickly back to line one. John was feeling blue because it had been raining all day. He stared sadly at the sea. So feeling blue. What does the word blue mean? It means that John was sad. Not that his favorite color was blue or he was joking or he painted the club was blue. He was sad. All right, 11, what is meant by he turned his back on his troubles and reluctantly embraced the evening ahead? Did it mean that it would rain all day? He had given up on having the party on the beach. He hugged his friends. He and his friends were going to be dancing all night. What does it mean he turned his back on his troubles and reluctantly? Okay, so let's go back to the passage quickly. Sometimes it's hard to remember all the facts. Line seven, right here. Okay, so it starts right here. He turned his back on his troubles. Okay, so remember he wanted to have the party outside, but he looked and the rain was falling and he was staring sadly out at the sea. And it says that the sea was plotting with the rain to ruin his birthday. So when he said he turned his back on his troubles, I'm going to imagine that it means he had had given up on having the party on the beach. So that's why he turned his back and went towards the clubhouse instead. So he had given up on having, not that it could rain all night, right? He turned his back. He had given up on having the party on the beach. Option B. Question 12. Oh, now we have another passage that we're going to be using to answer items 12 to 16. And guys, just a reminder that if you turn your screen, you come, your phone screens horizontally if you're using a phone, or it's best to use a computer or a smart TV to view these videos. It makes everything a little bit more clearer. All right, so the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal is a shipping route which significantly reduces the time a ship would spend sailing from countries like China to the United States and the Caribbean by connecting the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. The canal is like a toll road for ships in that, for a fee, ships could take a shortcut from the eastern part of the world to the western part. Work to construct the canal was first started by French engineers in 1881. However, the work was hampered by several setbacks such as disagreements about the design of the canal and how to keep the workers safe on the job. Laborers who came from different, many different countries, including Jamaica, lost their lives as a result of accidents on the job and tropical diseases like malaria and yellow fever. But working on the canal offered better opportunities than working at home. In 1904, the United States took over the construction of the canal. It was eventually completed in 1914. Annual traffic in 1914 was 1,000 ships. 
by 2012, more than 815,000 vessels had passed through the canal. It takes almost 12 hours to pass through the Panama Canal. This is really good since traveling the alternative route going around South America would take two weeks. Okay, let's get to the first question. The Panama Canal was a benefit to ships coming from which location? And we see the answer to that in the first paragraph. Okay. It reduces the time a ship would take sailing from countries like China. Okay. I think that's the only country they're mentioned. All right. So it's a benefit to ships coming from China. Okay. The other alternative was um, United States, the Caribbean, and South America. But the answer is China. Option A. Now, question 13, when was work first started on the Panama Canal? And I think that's in the second paragraph. Work to construct the canal was first started in 1881. So the answer is D, 1881. All right, which punctuation mark should be inserted at the two asterisks in line four, is it two commas, a comma and a semicolon, a full stop and a comma, or a semicolon and a comma? Let's go back to line four. Oops, so we have gone too far. All right, so let's get to line way, way too far. All right, so let's get to line four. All right, so here we go. So right here. All right, so the canal is like a toll road for ships in that for a small fee. So we want to use commas to separate this little clause here. So the answer would be A, two commas, okay? All right, question four, 15, what is traffic in line 14 used to referen in reference to? So let's go back quickly. It's always best to go back to see the evidence. So line 14, what is traffic? Line 14. So line 14, this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So annual traffic, okay, this is the word traffic, was 1,000 ships. So of course, when I talk about ships, remember they're on the ocean, so... It would be ships, definitely not cars, okay? So traffic would be the ships. Now, question 16, which best suggests that hampered, line 7, means... Okay, question 16, which best suggests what hampered, line 7, means as used in the passage? Does it mean had better opportunities, was first started, heavily laden or slowed down. So let's go to line seven quickly. Line seven, all right, this is five, six, seven. The work was hampered by several setbacks such as disagreements about the design and how to keep the workers safe. So it was hampered by several setbacks. Let's see what the possible answer could be. What does hamper mean? Better opportunities first started heavily then slow down. So I would say the work slowed down because of the setbacks, people getting um, sick and, you know, disagreements. Okay, so the work slowed down very much. All right, another passage to read. All right, so read the passage carefully, then use it to answer items 17 to 21. Greg was in his online class listening to his teacher, Mrs. Barnes. She was explaining the importance of continuing to work, work hard in school. After all, today was career day. The students were dressed as doctors, attorneys, teachers, mechanic, and pilot. Mrs. Barnes continued to address the class. And as you get ready to move into onto high school, please be reminded that you will have to continue to work hard in order to maintain those grades. Greg was hearing his voice, his teacher's voice, but his mind drifted away. He was thinking about a YouTube blogger named Ryan Kaji, who was nine years old. 
Greg was three years older than he was. Ryan had a YouTube channel called Ryan's World that his mom and dad helped him to set up and operate. The channel has over 27 million subscribers. On the channel, Ryan is the host who provides reviews on toys made by various manufacturers. Some of these manufacturers would send their toys to Ryan to review just before they made them available to the public. Videos of Ryan's reviewing these toys would then be made. The result was a three-way the result was a three-way benefit. The toy manufacturers would make improvements to the toys based on Ryan's recommendations. Children would ask their parents to buy the toys that Ryan gave a five-star rating, and Ryan would get paid for all his hard work. He and his parents were quite a team. Mrs. Boy, Mrs. Barnes' voice jolted Greg back from his daydreaming. There are many careers that are awaiting you out there. Some are traditional and others are waiting to be discovered. But remember, being prepared allows you to take advantage of opportunities. Doing well in school is still the best way to be prepared. Okay, so question 17. Who is telling the story? Is it the vlogger? Mrs. Barnes, the narrator, or Greg? It's not the vlogger, because the vlogger was just mentioned in Greg's thoughts, I would say. Mrs. Barnes was speaking, and of course, you, the person who was telling the story identified her as Mrs. Barnes. Um, it could not be Greg either, because of course, Greg was also identified as Greg. So there was a narrator. Somebody was telling the story. If it was Greg telling the story, Greg would have said, I you know, you would have used the word I, right? So it wasn't Greg, but there was a narrator. Somebody was giving an account of this story. Okay, so the answer is C. Question 18, which best explains why toy manufacturers would want to improve their product? Okay, and I don't think we even need to go back to the passage. Let's look at the option. To get more subscribers, to get more views, to impress Ryan, or to sell more toys. Why would toy manufacturers want to improve their products? Ultimately, their job, right? Their goal is to sell more toys, right? They're in the business of selling toys, so they would want to improve the products because the, the better it is, then the more it would sell, okay? So their, their main reason would be to sell more toys. 18D. Which is evidence of the popularity of Ryan's world? Okay, and again, we don't have to go back to the passage. We can look at the options here. That will help us to determine what that should be. The channel puts out videos that reviews toys. The channel has over 27 million subscribers. Ryan is only nine years old. Or that Mrs. Barnes watched YouTube videos. What's evidence of the popularity? Okay, the only obvious thing here is that the channel has over 27 million subscribers. And I'm just gonna pause right here to tell you guys, please subscribe to my channel. Help me get 27 million subscribers too. Thank you, share with a friend as well. Okay, so the answer for 19, the channel has over 27 million subscribers. All right, let me make this a little bit bigger. Which idea is being conveyed by Mrs. Barnes in the last three sentences of the passage. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the passage, but let's look at the options first. Traditional careers are the best ones. Making videos can be a career. Education is still very important. Virtual school is as good as face-to-face. -face. We don't necessarily need to go back, but just to be sure, the last three lines right here, he said there are many careers that are awaiting you out there. Some are traditional. What it says, remember, be prepared allows you to take advantage. Doing well in school. Okay, doing well in school. Okay, that's the part there. So I would say education is still very important. That's what she was trying to tell the students. All right, and 21, which best explains why Ryan's world is so successful? Is it that because is it because a new video is posted on a daily basis? Ryan's world is mostly for young people. YouTube is mostly used for watching videos. Or Ryan's world helps buyers to make better choices. 
I think D is the answer. Ryan's world helps buyers to make better choices. That's why it's so successful because, of course, based on his reviews and they watch him interact with the toys, then they are able to make better decisions as to what toys are good and all of that. So that's why, and I'm not saying it's only toys, but I guess the main thing there were toys that they talk about. So that's why it was most successful because it helps buyers to make better choices. All right, items 22 to 26. Again, another passage to read. You don't like reading? Hmm. All right, so pipe water versus bottled water. Can you drink the water straight from the pipe in Jamaica? Short answer, yes. Water from the pipe is often healthier for you. That is something worth knowing. Jamaica's water management protocols require frequent testing of water from the pipe for microorganisms such as E. coli and other harmful contaminants. So yes, in Jamaica, you can stick your glass under a pipe, fill it up and chug it down with no worries. You may already know this, but it's worth repeating here. Bottled water is often simply just treated pipe water camouflaged by fancy labels and promoted by celebrities. There is no obligation for bottled water manufacturers to disclose the source of the bottled water unless it is mineral or spring water. Therefore, that costly bottle of water might be the same thing you, have, you could have had right out of your own kitchen type. And that is so true. All right, so what part of speech is that in line two? Is it an adjective, adverb, preposition, or pronoun? All right, this word, that. That is something we're knowing. Okay, so whatever was said before. And if you said something, okay, no, so those are things, right? So that would be a pronoun. It's being used instead of the noun. Knowledge, pretty much that they would have told you or whatever the statement was before. That statement, that information, right? What, sorry, 23, which best explains why an exclamation mark is used in line two? Is it that the writer is scared? New information is being revealed. It is a good, good way to begin a passage. The writer is trying to be funny. Um, let's go back to line two. Trying to go back and forth real quickly. Um, this exclamation mark right here, that's what they're referring to. Water from the pipe is often healthier for you. Okay, I don't think the writer was trying to be, I don't think the writer was scared. It's actually that new information is being revealed. So they're very excited about presenting that information to you, I suppose, or just to give you, hey, this is what we know. All right, so the answer is B. Question 24, what kind of noun is obligation? Line nine, okay? And I don't even need to go back to line nine, but the word obligation. Usually all these words that end with shun, education and obligation and all these shun words, okay? Those are abstract nouns, not common, not concrete, proper, okay? So concrete nouns will, of course, be the ones that you're able to physically interact with C, touch, and so on. Proper nouns, of course, are those special names for, special nouns, right? Names for nouns, special names given to persons, places, and things. Common nouns, of course, are the regular everyday, boy, girl, dog, and so on. So abstract is the ones, it's just an idea. It's not something that you can actually touch, but it's still a noun. All right, 25. Which word could best replace camouflage in line 8? Again, I don't necessarily need to go back, but let's go to line 8 quickly. Camouflage, okay? Let's look at line 8. So this is 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, this is line 8, the word camouflage. So bottled water is simply, it's often simply just treated pipe water camouflaged by fancy labels. Camouflaged. Is it bottled, masked, 
repeated or reviewed, I would say masked, okay? Camouflage. When you think about the soldiers and the clothes that they wear, okay, it helps them to hide in bushes. You know, they blend in with trees and bushes very well. So that's their type of material that they close, the camouflage that they wear. So it pretty much is a mask. All right, item 26, which best describes the writer's view? Jamaica has the best bottled water in the world. Celebrities are often used to advertise bottled water. Jamaica's pipe water is just as good as bottled water. Bottled water is good for you. I would say the answer is C, Jamaica's pipe water is just as good as bottled water. In fact, it might very well be bottled um, pipe water that's in those bottles. All right, so it says examine and read the information in the two sources carefully. Use them to answer items 27 to 30. Okay, source one, different reasons like people call the fire station. Okay, so here's a pie chart and it pretty much divides into sections the different reasons why people call the fire station. Um, fires, surprisingly, is the least reason for which people call the fire station, just 4%. False alarms, 8% animal rescue, 6% other reasons, 19% medical emergencies, 24 and motor vehicle accidents, 39%. So 39% there, the highest for motor vehicle accident, the lowest being fires. Wow. All right, so source two now, the jaws of life, the Hearst Rescue Tool was invented by George Hearst in about 1961 after he saw a car after he saw a car race accident in which it took workers over an hour to remove an injured driver from his car. In the past, rescuers, including firefighters, often used circular saws to rescue people who had been trapped in their cars after an accident. These saws had several disadvantages. Saws can create sparks, which could start a fire, create loud sounds, stress the victims, and often cut slowly. On the other hand, rescuers could try to pry open the vehicle doors with a crowbar or halogen bar, but this could also damage the vehicle or injure the victims further. In comparison, Hydraulic spreader cutters were quieter, faster, stronger, and more versatile. They could cut open and even lift a vehicle. The hydraulic spreader was originally developed in 1972 by Tim Smith and Mike Brick, employees of Hearst Products. They further developed the spreader in about 1976 to cut and pry apart metals. It is now used by many rescuers. When an occupant is trapped, the tool is used to pry or cut the car to remove the occupant. It takes about two minutes to take the roof off a car. Mike Brick made up the phrase jaws of life after he observed people saying that their new device snatched people from the jaws of death. He then used the name as a registered brand name for Hearst products. All right, so let's get to the first question. What is meant by false alarms as used in source one? Is it cell phone calls, non-emergency calls, calls from a landline, animal rescue calls? Of course, it would be non-emergency calls, a false alarm, meaning it's not a true emergency. It's not an emergency, okay? Question 28, why were crowbars not the best tools? Is it because they were too heavy, not strong, not safe? Too expensive. I know the answer, but let's go back quickly to the passage. It says, um, here they talk about the crowbar. Rescuers could try to pry open the vehicle doors with a crowbar, but this could damage the vehicle or injure the victims further. So the crowbar, that the option was not safe. That's option C. Okay, question 29, what do firefighters spend most of their time doing? And I did mention that in the beginning, 39% they rescued accident victims, okay? Not fires, okay? Not false alarm, those are pretty much under 10% each, but they spent most of their time, 39%, according to the pie chart, rescuing accident victims. And 
Question 30. Which conclusion can best be drawn after reading both sources? Is it that victims of motor vehicle accidents are often rescued by firefighters? First products make safety equipments that save lives. The jaws of life is a useful safety equipment used by firefighters. Firemen respond to different kinds of emergencies. All right, so what conclusion can best be drawn from reading both sources? Let me just go straight up to that a little bit. All right, so we talk about the jaws of life, and in it, they talk about um, rescued people from injury, from accidents. And in the second paragraph, it says, in the past, rescuers, including firefighters, but it didn't tell us pretty much if most of these rescuers were firefighters. It said rescuers, including firefighters. But we know, of course, that um, people call the fire station for different reasons, medical emergencies, other reasons, um, motor vehicle accidents, fires, and so on. So what do we, um, what can we conclude from? From reading both sources, it can be concluded that firemen respond to different kinds of emergency. Yes, um, motor vehicle accidents, you know, that's one of the major things that they are. But it didn't actually tell us that um, victims of motor vehicles are often rescued. They could be rescued by fire, right? but they could have been rescued by, perhaps by a host of other different types of people, okay? But the main conclusion, the best conclusion is that firemen, based on the two sources, firemen respond to different kinds of emergencies, including motor vehicle accidents. All right, to read the poem carefully, then use it to, go back to the instruction. Read the poem carefully, then use it to answer items 31 to 34. Reflection on wrecked kites. On the sagging, on the sagging telephone wires just outside my window, hang the corpses of what were once three joyous little kites. Only a few days ago, they were describing fussy little arcs up there in the blue, bobbing and buzzing. They soared as they flew, and now they look so forlorn, so pitiful, hanging there limply, their flat. Silly heads wobbling in the breeze, their scraggy tails twined around the swaying wires, their happy function frustrated, their brief day done. And that's a poem by Frank Hollymore. All right, so question 31. Where did the writer first see the kites? Was it in the store, twined around wires, wobbling in the breeze, or up there in the blue? Let's see where he first saw. Okay, so it says only a so they, you saw them on the wire. They said a few days ago, they were um, up there in the blue, right in the sky. So uh, that's where you saw them a few days ago. And then you mentioned where you saw them now. So you first saw the kites. And you notice they have the first there in italic. So pay attention to that. You first saw them up in the blue. Okay, then they got twined up, right? So they could not have been up in the blue after being twined in the wires. All right, so question 32, which is an example of contrast, okay? Pretty much opposites. They soared as they flew up there in the blue. That's pretty much the same thing. Bobbing and buzzing, hanging there limply. Three joyous as a kite, they soared as they flew, hung the corpses, woggling in the breeze. I would say the contrast would be bobbing and buzzing. You know, they're up there doing their thing if you don't know what kites look like. And then hanging limply would be quite the opposite of that, okay? So question 32, the answer is B. Question 33, how does the poet feel about the kites? He is unconcerned, sympathetic, hopeful, or angry? Um, there's so much detail that he put into describing how they were before and how they are now looking so pitiful and all of that. And you see what he says. Um, their happy function frustrated and their brief day done, they are just so forlorn, okay? So they're looking so sad. So I'm thinking that he is sympathetic to them. They were so happy and now they are like corpses. All right, so 
Question 34. Although the poem talks about kites, there is a deeper meaning to it. Which this, which best tells us what that deeper meaning is? Is it sunshine and rain, good and evil, life and death, or light and darkness? And the answer is life and death. It talks about them being up and about and busy, and then they're hanging limply like corpses. And so, just like life, we have life today, we're up and about, running around, and then the next minute, you know, some people are no longer with us. Okay, so life and death. Okay, questions 35 to 39 can be answered by reading this passage, Cardiff Beach. You make it a bit smaller. All right, so Cardiff Beach. I want everything to be on the same page, hopefully. Okay, all right, so Cardiff Beach. The sun appeared over the mountains, painting the landscape in gold. It warmed the morning dew on the grass and lifted the, oak of, the cloak of darkness. Gazelle, her little brother, Sean and their parents were on their way to Cardiff Beach. They were now close to the beach. You could tell because of the smell of the sea. Its fragrance was hard to describe, but it smelled like something that was good for your lungs. It was not only the sea that made them feel cool. There were not two tall coconut trees and large almond trees that lined the entrance to the beach as well as the beach itself. The almond trees on the beach offered lots of shade. In the shade, families gathered, cooked home cooked, sorry, ate home cooked meals, played dominoes, children laughed and enjoyed each other's company. A selector named Up Top Boss entertained everyone. His playlist included hits from Agent Sasko, Protege, and Queen Africa. A group of blackbirds was also having their picnic. Their chatter was a loud chorus as they competed for the crumbs that fell from the tables. The, a little girl of about three years was fascinated with them. She distributed crumbs from the cake she was eating to them and they were delighted to have it. But on the dark horizon, a, oh, sorry, but on the distant horizon, a dark cloud gathered. No one seemed to notice until there was a flash of lightning and the roar of thunder. The, the rain came upon the beachgoers as a surprise. Small, almost unnoticeable droplets then gradually increased in number and volume. The rain came down suddenly, sending everyone scampering for cover. Even the large almond trees that did a good job of blocking out the sun was no match for the heavy afternoon downpour. Giselle and her family ran back to the car to escape the heavy downpour. Just then, just as suddenly as it came, it stopped. Out came the sun again as if it had never been gone, but, then ma but only masked by the clouds. And the wind came again like a director in a play, and the sun and the rain were actors playing out a script. The script. All right, so it's a very long passage, but it pretty much talks about this family going on their way to the beach. The sun was out, they were at the beach, and the smell of the, of the sea, and they were playing and enjoying, and the backwards, everybody eating domino games and all of that. Then the dark clouds started to gather. Rain came, everybody ran for cover, and then they said as quickly as it came, it stopped. Oh, it came the sun again, okay? Pretty much what that passage was saying. All right, so what element of story writing is most evident in the story? Is it a climax, characterization, resolution, or the setting? I'm going to say the setting. Throughout the, this passage, there was so much descriptive, uh, you know, writing about the setting and the the the... the the um the coconut the palm the the almond trees and all the different trees and the breeze and the you know pretty much everything being described the sun and all of that so I'm gonna say the setting okay then in thirty six in which paragraph does the mood of the story change for the second time okay so it says changed so it didn't ask when did the first change right it said for the second time. So let's go back. Is it in the four, fifth, fourth, third, or second? So let's go back quickly, and I'm just going to scan, 
scan through quickly. All right, so the sun was out, all right? The sun was out and all of that. They were enjoying themselves at the beach. Then it changed, okay? This was the first change now in paragraph four. When it changed and it started to rain. Then it changed again, okay? And then the sun came back out. So it changed for the second time in paragraph five, okay? So that's my... The mood in terms of, you know, sunny and bright and all of that. And then came gloomy and dark and rain and all of that. So um, the mood changed for the second time in paragraph 5, so 36A. All right, 37. What is being suggested by the sun appeared over the mountains, painting the landscape in gold? Was it that the sun was in hide hiding? Sun had been gone for a very long time. It was now late evening and the sun was setting or it was now early morning and the sun was rising. Answer is D. All right, it appeared over the mountains, painting the landscape. So this was morning, right? If it was setting, then it would have been disappearing behind the mountains. Okay, but it appeared, so it was rising. All right. So now for items 38 to 40, you're going to indicate your response by shading the letter in the sentence or paragraph that makes it correct, okay? So you are going to, for these questions, you're going to have, um, you're going to have to choose more than one response, okay? So for item 38, it says you're going to match the word correct, the word choice which correctly corresponds with each sentence from the story, Cardiff Beach. Look closely at the options given before making your selection. Word choices. All right, so we have either climax for A, B, resolution, C, setting, and D, character. So in the first line, let's look at it. Out came the sun again as if it had never been gone, but only masked by the clouds. I would think that this is B, the resolution, okay? So this is how it was all resolved by the sun coming back out again. Everybody was able to go back to normal. All right, so Giselle, her younger brother, Sean, and their parents were on their way to Cardiff Beach. These are the characters, so that's D. And then, but on the distant horizon, a dark cloud gathered. And I would think that this is the climax, the height of the thing. You now when the rain started and everybody started to, you know, get into a whole frenzy, trying to get out of the rain. All right. So 39, use the word choices from A to P below to correctly complete the paragraph which follows. Look closely at the options given for each section before making your selection. All right, so from A to D, we have drafting, pre-writing, publishing, and editing. And then from E to H, reported speech, literal language, transitional words, figurative language, from I to L, arrange, write, visualize, and plan. And then from M to P, conflict, more detail, dialogue, more characters. So here's a paragraph. Cardiff Beach is an example of what in the writing process? Is it drafting, pre-writing, publishing, or editing? I would say publishing, okay? Pretty much where the story was complete, so it was published. All right, so second sentence. The writer uses what in the first sentence? Again, we're looking at from E to H. Okay, was it reported speech, literal language, traditional word, figurative language? I would say figurative language, okay? That's H. So the writer used figurative language in the first sentence. This helps the reader to better, is it arrange, write, visualize, or plan where the story is taking place, I would say visualize, okay? Brought it to life. So it pretty much helps the reader to better visualize where the story is taking place. And it's also a useful technique for adding, is it conflict, more detailed dialogue, or more characters, and more detail to the narrative. 
All right, and here we are now at the final question. Please, guys, remember to subscribe to my channel and share with a friend. I have not only pep, but reading content as well. All right, so a report was written based on the sale of items at the canteen at New Leaf Primary School. So there's a table showing information gathered about the number of items sold at the canteen. Then use the information to help you decide which option to use to fill in the blanks in the report. Each option should only be used once, okay? So there's no time you're going to be using the same um, response. All right, so you're going to use the table and the choices below to correctly complete the chart. So we have a table here that shows different type of food, fried chicken, beef patties, bun and cheese, and pizza, okay? And it told us from Monday to Friday the total that was consumed for each, those totals for each type of food is over here. Then we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So a com the combination of the total number of chicken, patty, buns, and pizza um, ordered for Monday is here. And then all the, com the, the orders for Tuesday, the combination would be here and so on. All right. So... Let's look at the word choice. We said pizza, beef patties, bun and cheese, and chicken. That's from A to D. E to H, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And then from I to L, increase variation, decrease, and consistency. So for question 40, there are so many different options. So a close look at the table shows that what is the most popular item bought by the students of newly primary and what is the least popular okay so we're going to look back at the table to see what's the most popular item and what's the least popular item all right so remember each of the items are listed here so we can go across to see how much was ordered for the entire week for each and we see that for bun and cheese it was five sorry for fried chicken 500 beef patties 301 Bun and cheese 105 and pizza 146. So the most popular 500 that's fried chicken and the least popular was bun and cheese. So now that we know that we can go to our answer. All right. So look at the a close look at the table shows that what is the most popular item? Fried chicken, that's D, the most popular item. And which one was the least popular item? That's bun and cheese. That's C. Okay, and then the number of, next question says, the number of dash sold are almost always the same for the period exam. So let's look to see which item pretty much had the same number being sold each time. Okay, so let's look at fried chicken. I see varied numbers. Beef patty dough had 60, 62, 59, 60, 60. So that pretty much was the same, almost the same throughout. But and cheese, 31, then twin, then 20, varying amounts, not anything consistent. They are the same for pizza. So it was beef patties. That's the one that had um, almost the same for the period being examined. And beef patties would be B. So D, C, B so far. Next. Of the five days, sales were the lowest on which day and the highest on which day. So we're going to look to see when was of the five days, when was sales the lowest and when was it highest. Okay. Go back to the table again. All right. So on Monday, remember we're looking at them now based on days. So on Monday, 193, Tuesday, 194, Wednesday, 201. Thursday 2.23 and on Friday 2.41. So the highest was on Friday and the lowest was on Monday. Okay, so highest on Friday, lowest on Monday. So of the five days, sales were the lowest on Monday, that's E, and the highest on Friday, that's H. It is also important to note that both pizza and fried chicken have seen an is it increase in sales 
inflation decrease our consistency. Both pizza and fried chicken. What kind of sale have we been seeing? Increase, decrease, same or um I'm not sure where a variety. Okay, so let's look at fried chicken. Okay. 83, then 87, 94, 115. It has consistently been increasing. And pizza from 19 to 23, 28, 31, 45. That also has increased consistently. Increased. So I would say increase. It kept increasing. The order got kept increasing day after day over day. All right. So increase would be I. And that takes us to the end of the paper, guys. Please, again, be reminded to subscribe to Takiba Academy's channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.